Um, well, thank you all. Uh, the last two presentations were certainly very interesting and very relevant to, I guess, what we're all talking about, not just this paper. Um, so what I'm presenting here today, what I submitted for review here is, was just kind of the front end of the paper. Um, analysis is largely completed, but the paper hasn't, I have to put it all, uh, I think I have to put it all in the paper, basically the findings. So what I sent out to everyone for the paper was kind of the setup um, and discussing the theoretical implications and the literature review um, for this work. Um, so yeah, my name is, is Christian Kelly Scott. I suppose I can go by doctor. Uh, it's not conferred until May, but I'm all already in set. Uh, and then my advisor, Dr. Guansheng Chi, um, we're presenting work here that we conducted in 2016 and 2017, primary data collection. Um, and so the title of the paper is Keeping Up with the Asian Malinas, uh, Conspicuous Consumption in the Rural Southern, in Rural Southern Kyrgyzstan. Um, and so is, is male, is male ovas is, isn't a name of a respondent or anything. It is, uh, simply the most common name in Kyrgyzstan. So it's a bit of a play on words to be like keeping up with the Joneses is this idea of, uh, competitive consumptive spending in relationship with your neighbor. Um, and so this paper is part of a larger project uh, focusing on changes in vulnerable communities, specifically high elevation communities. Um, so it's a it's kind of a longitudinal project focusing on places undergoing environmental transformation like high elevation Kyrgyzstan, um, as well as socioeconomic transformations and political transformations as we see with even earlier um, this year with elections and then changes happening all throughout Kyrgyzstan in terms of the political structure and the uh, obvious social and uh, economic changes that the whole world's undergoing in an increasingly globalized economy. Um, so being a former Soviet state, this transformation um, of agricultural reform and uh, a more, I don't want to be necessarily uh, evaluative, a more, uh, not a free market, but a more capitalistic society um, in terms of its economic structure has tremendous implications on both short-term and long-term expenditure patterns um, that arise as a result of being, I think, as of 2019, the second most remittance dependent nation um, in the world with most migrants, I'm sure as a lot of you know, going to Russia and uh, Kazakhstan. So the paper first takes a look at migration through the lens of new economics of labor migration um, in that migration is not just a phenomenon of an individual leaving a household, but it is rather um, a result of of many decisions that both a household makes as well as in the destination community makes around uh, international labor markets. And then the new economics of labor migration posits that that has impacts not just on the individual to the destination, but also on the wider community, both in the origin and in the destination community. So in, in this study, we focused on the origin community um, as largely a process of rural to urban migration. Um, I'm sure as we're all familiar, Kyrgyzstan is a, a highly remittance dependent country. Um, sorry, I gotta make sure that no one's buzzing in uh, to join. All right, we're good. Um, we're up to one fifth of the working age population has migrated um, and what has come to pass in terms of, and we heard it in the first presentation, uh, the transformation of a past, largely pastoral society um, into an increasingly commodified uh, economic climate. And so what has come to pass is kind of a, a blend of traditional agro-pastoral livelihoods where you practice sedentary agriculture in a village setting uh, and then semi-nomadic seasonal movements through mountain pastures um, in combination with uh, international and domestic labor migration, and then the impacts that that has in, in coming together in contemporary livelihoods and um, 
how that impacts the wider community is the focus of the study. So the general guiding research questions that started um, are what are the effects of labor migration and remittance expenditures in southern uh, rural southern Kyrgyz communities? How do remittance expend expenditures impact origin households? And then what, if any, are the social consequences of these expenditures? And then through analysis, what emerged was a focus on social, socially motivated discretionary spending, specifically construction and celebrations. Um, and then the distinction of this as conspicuous consumption or as um, the very definition of conspicuous consumption and discretionary spending. Uh, I suppose I should go into a little bit about conspicuous consumption. It's based on uh, kind of Veblen's classical work focusing on the leisure class and in general, the idea of consumption for the sake of consumption um, in that social prestige and value um, are not readily observable in immediate wealth. Um, the idea of wealth is somewhat of a latent concept that is only then displayed by the act of spending. So in the absence of automatically knowing what everyone's total net worth is in their household or as an individual, the way that in, uh, communities and peer groups are able to assess someone's wealth or social status centering around the wealth, more importantly, um, is through their expenditures, through the visible act of spending, which is, in this case, conspicuous consumption, which is the, the act of spending for the sake of spending to demonstrate wealth, um, and specifically to reflect the social desirability of consumption. Um, now this paper kind of takes that definition and, and, it, and, and also in, in its conclusions questions whether or not that is in fact what is happening. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that, I suppose. Um, so the larger context of the study was this is based on two years of field work. Um, one year of field work in Southern Kyrgyzstan in Narin. Um, here with, you can see a snowball sampling of villages. Um, 13 villages were selected with 34 in-depth interviews, 11 key informant interviews, and 591 household surveys. And then the following year, in the summer of 2017, a focus then on uh, Alai Rayon, which is, again, in the south here, we are at uh, upper point looking out over Alai Rayon, which developed uh, a more representative sample uh, of surveys focusing on stratification around market access, population, elevation, and political divides. Um, and so what you see here is the sample strata and the, the selected villages uh, are green then, and the villages that were not selected as part of the randomized sample strata are orange with ineligible villages um, shown in red. Um, and here we can see just a dot, so this dot, each dot represents a uh, cluster of surveys conducted in that area. Uh, a survey was indicated as a uh, household for the unit of analysis, um, and every survey included a roster. So we were able to capture uh, 1,234 household surveys in total, getting information on over 6,000 individuals, over 2,000 children, and specifically among those 275 migrants who are away from the households. Um, and so we did not speak with the migrants themselves, I should say. Um, we spoke to the household representative that informed us on uh, the spending habits and the details of migrants that were away. Um, and then this also included 52 in-depth interviews in the 2017 round of data collection. Um, the paper is very much a mixed methods approach. Um, here is, is the, the coding strategy for the quali qualitative methods. It was depending on how you classify it, a two or three stage um, thematic coding process, looking at specific impacts of remittances and migration on household spending and the social motivations behind that. Um, so broadly speaking here, uh, the, the wider term findings are centered around poverty, migration, livelihoods, um, poverty as a central driver to motivating migration, um, as well as shifts in the very nature of financial capital in communities being derived mostly from remittances. Um, other forms of capital then were not derived from remittances, um, and it, it prompts an interesting discussion on the 
uh, fungible nature of money in these rural communities uh, on a wider context. Um, but specifically, so most of the migrants were found to be younger males. Um, usually they had a young a family um, and their migration motivation was largely centered around uh, under and unemployment that drove people to move away in order to provide for those families. Um, or indeed, uh, single younger adults um, that were not then tied to a community and responsible um, with other household labor commitments and were more flexible in their ability to leave and then send back money to the origin community. And you can see there's uh, a significant amount of, uh, of remittances that households estimated over $1,400 is the, the mean for international remittances that uh, a migrant household received. Um, remittance expenditures, so this is interesting because the, the distinction here is these are just the percentages and just estimates of households that are receiving remittances and how they are then able to spend that within their household. But there's a significant problem with endogeneity here in that, um, you know, are these expenditures expenditures that they would be making otherwise? Um, or are these expenditures replacing other areas that maybe households may have been spending? Um, or are these new areas of expenditure? So would this construction, would these medical expenditures, would this purchase of food happen um, where otherwise it would not have happened? Now, to, in order to do this, uh, a large sample is required in order to be able to uh, help address this problem of endogeneity of remittance expenditures. Um, and so for the purpose of this paper, uh, quantitative results were used on more secondary analysis and the qualitative analysis was used as the, the primary source of the information um, in analysis and guiding the findings of the paper um, because we were able to ask very detailed questions around remittance expenditures, motivations for remittance expenditures, um, as well as the, the, the practice and the praxis of uh, the migrants sending money back to the origin household. Um, so you can see here, there's a heavy emphasis on construction. So this is kind of the idea where you're, you're building a house um, or you're building a stable and you're building some kind of a structure um, that is very much in relation to your neighbors and everyone is very visibly spending on construction. Um, so some people have positive perceptions, think, thinking of migration as uh, globalization, the world is changing and the economy uh, is growing up. Others see it as a very high risk of divorce or uh, indeed many migrants moving away and performing jobs that are dangerous. Um, and so there is a, a, an element of household risk that needs to be managed in each, um, in each household's decision making process when they send a migrant away and that migrant then decides how much money to send back and then how the household manages the decision of what to spend that money on. Um, so just real quick, so poverty, migration, and livelihoods as a central actor um, and employment is a big issue. It is true, for example, two of my sons, both of them have diplomas because of unemployment. They had to go to Russia. The entire situation is emerging because of poverty. And here you see two individuals that have a, a high social capital leaving the community um, out of economic necessity when otherwise uh, in these rural communities, young educated adults um, would have a, a key role in the local labor economy um, and in part due to poverty, in part due to larger structural forces, um, they are see leaving and migration as a necessity. Um, so it's just real quick, the idea of remittance expenditures driving social stratification is a central uh, influence in the idea of conspicuous consumption in households. So the idea that uh, with most of this remittance money being spent on construction, uh, a household then feels pressure to keep up with their neighbors. Um, and so what we see here is kind of an early typology and, and I more or less abandon this typo typology in present presenting the findings, but I think it's useful for our discussion here um, to show that you know there's, there's more elite socioeconomic households with uh, lots of livestock, 
uh, higher education status, a diversified income strategy, and improved housing conditions, whether that sometimes that even is um, multiple houses in a rural and an urban location. Um, and the, the larger, larger driving force for these individuals to migrate and send money back is for supplemental income and social prestige. Prestige then is derived from leaving and sending money back. And then the origin household is able to demonstrate that social prestige through their expenditures, primarily in construction and houses. And that's what this paper focuses on. Um, it's less spent on productive assets like livestock and more spent on these very visible um, areas like celebrations, funerals, and weddings. Um, there's actually been some recent pushback, actually not, not even recent, there's uh, kind of a, a media and political tradition in Kyrgyzstan and surrounding countries um, that focuses on what is considered to be lavish or extravagant spending around weddings and celebrations. Um, that is uh, considered to be a social necessity and also economically crippling to some families. Um, and so this kind of takes a, a critical view of is that discretionary spending or is that really required social spending um, in order to fit neatly into one of these socioeconomic stratas, um, regardless of whether or not you necessarily have the wealth behind that expenditure in order to be classified as a, an elevated socioeconomic household where you can see some people are more educated, you have a, a good homestead with some productive assets, and then you have some households that have sig substantial difficulty um, due to labor migration and a lack of high human capital within the household to uh, be able to cultivate productive assets within their rural community. And then you have some households that have very few productive assets um, where severe poverty, uh, divorce and mortality related to migration um, is a way of traditionally households would pursue migration as a way to manage household risk. And here you see that that risk uh, is very high and there is not much of a social safety net, um, especially in uh, the implications of migration and, and remittance expenditures. Um, so this is purposeful migration motivation. Um, people are leaving because of poverty. People are leaving um, because of the avenue into financial capital. And then that is driving local spending um, and impacting local economies with a construction boom in these rural communities and this process of keeping up with the Ishmaelinovs. Um, so more research is needed into this and I very much am looking forward to discussion because this paper is very much still in development. Um, I think I have a, a good idea of where I wanna go with it, but I'm uh, certainly looking forward to a lively discussion. Um, and I gotta thank my funders um, for helping support this work as well as the wonderful research team of myself um, and my advisor, uh, Guanjin couldn't be here today, but he uh, certainly appreciates everyone's hard work. This was a um, result of many people uh, putting together a lot of work to, uh, to try to make an inclusive and informed study. And uh, yeah, so thank you all. I look forward to our conversations. Thank you, Chris.